Right now on News Channel 6 at 6, two shootings early Sunday morning and the historic downtown Augusta area leaving two dead. Plus, reports of shots fired today in the Augusta Mall just a day after the March for Our Lives rally. Also ahead, a hero in the eyes of Ukrainians saving over 350 orphan children escaped from the dangers of Eastern Europe. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 6. Good evening, I'm Dernice Jefferson filling in for Renetta DuBose. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Coverage you can count on begins with the Richmond County Sheriff's Office investigating a call of shots fired at the Augusta Mall. That call came in around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Deputies were on scene and determined that no one fired a gun, but someone may have brandished a firearm and several shoppers ran into the parking lot. News Channel 6 was on scene shortly after receiving a tip from someone at the mall. We spoke with a few shoppers who were there when the chaos erupted. We were in Hot Topic and the first, I was looking at some bags and I hear stopping and I look up and I see a woman with her stroller running and then that's when I see a bunch of people behind her running and the lady closed the doors and they told us to go to the back. We waited for a good while until we got the okay from securities to come out. No injuries have been reported. We will continue to update you as we learn more. Two deadly shootings under investigation in Augusta. According to the coroner's office, the first shooting took place at 10th and Broad Streets, where 21-year-old Logan Adderley was shot at least once. The victim died at the scene. The second shooting took place at 11th and Grand Boulevard. That victim was 19-year-old Jaquan Gunter. He was shot at least once and died at the scene as well. An autopsy is scheduled at the GBI lab. Right now, authorities say it's not clear whether the two incidents are connected. After we made headlines in 2020 when he was shot during an altercation at a Circle K in Evans. Count on News Channel 6 to keep you updated on this developing story. Those shootings downtown Sunday morning came just hours after the March for Our Lives rally at the Unitarian Uvernalist Church. News Channel 6's Kim Vickers has more on what people are saying about the recent gun violence. I don't feel safe in this country. Like, I just came back from Korea, I felt perfectly fine, you know, keeping my wallet on just any normal bar. And then if I go down the street, I have to look behind me every like 10 steps. It's ridiculous. Show me what democracy looks like. Hours after a rally to end gun violence, two young men lost their lives after being shot. 19-year-old Jaquan Gunter was shot and killed off 11th Street, and 21-year-old Logan Ederly died at 10th and Broad. David Peltier says the city needs more deputies than it has to keep the violence at bay. You know, I think we really need to continue to invest in um, the sheriff's office. Uh, they've been really understaffed the last few years with having a lot of uh, deputies not being able to be um, everywhere at all times. And so I think, you know, we need to really push for um, the Augusta Commission and our local government officials to really invest more in the sheriff's office. Michael Pine says the problem with rising gun violence isn't just a local problem. I mean, it's definitely something that's centric to America in the first place. and. Uh, Especially with you know school shootings that have been happening on a monthly basis, we definitely at this time need to do something about gun reform. Pine isn't convinced lawmakers will do anything different than they have been. Peltier disagrees. I think we're starting to see a lot more uh, parties from both sides come to the table. I know the, there are some senators right now in Washington working on some uh, bipartisan legislation on that. March for Our Lives CSRA responded to Sunday's shooting, saying in part, every time a gun is used to take a life, the need to address gun violence and safety concerns is reinforced. Enough is enough. Our hearts go out to the family and friends of these two young men and all who have experienced this type of loss. Pine says nothing will change until the laws do. Like, no parent should ever have to bury a child. And again, that goes back to Congress. Like, our laws, our lawmakers, they need to fix this. In Augusta, Kim Vickers, WJBF, News Channel 6. March for Our Lives CSRA was just yesterday. People were out taking a stand against the ongoing gun violence in Augusta. Elizabeth Hahn helped organize a March for Our Lives rally in 2018 at the request of her daughter and some friends. This came after the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High, High School in Parkland, Florida. Hahn says she and her fellow organizers can't believe they're here again. As moms and then me as a public school teacher, um, 
This issue is affecting our community in countless ways. Um, gun violence in our schools, gun violence in our grocery stores, at our movie theaters, at our malls, at our hospitals. I mean, just this is getting so out of control at this point that I think it's important to be visible again. Well, right now it's time to take a look at your weather forecast with our meteorologist Ryan Gold. And Ryan, today was a very hot Sunday. Yeah, there's only one word to really describe it, and that's disgusting. Yes. I, I took one <laughs> walk out. The, it's, Gross. It's just so muggy, sticky. It's not great, Dernice. You know, yeah. you take one step outside, it feels, uh, it hits you like a ton of bricks, and it's pretty much going to be that story all week long. Here on Jiffy Loop Sky Cam, we do have some cumulus clouds out there, so it's getting more fair weather, but we do have a few showers. We had a few of them earlier this afternoon. Now there's just southeast of Hepzibah, a small collection of some heavier pockets of rain that are now dying, but across the board, we would love to have more rain, but it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing that for a little while longer. Current temperature at 89 degrees. We were at 94 before those showers cooled off the uh, temperature sensor at the Bushfield Airport. And in Evans, it gives you a much better idea of how hot we actually are, which is going to be those lower to mid 90s now as we continue to cool on off for the day. Uh, we do expect to get down to the 70s at least by around 11, 12 o'clock. And we're probably going to be staying in those 70s for the most part tonight into tomorrow morning. But like we were mentioning, it's humid. Dernisa said it for sure, right on the money. It's humid, it's sticky. It's it's muggy. It's just awful across the board. There's no sugar coating it. We're going to be in that sticky range pretty much starting tomorrow and going all the way through Thursday. And even today, it was a little on that stickier end with dew points getting closer to 70 and even surpassing 70. We could be seeing some very hot conditions on our way, especially since that heat index is going to be at 110 on a few of these days. I'll have more details about that coming up in the full forecast. Dear Nisa. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Firefighters are on the scene of an abandoned structure fire on Pine Log Road in Aiken. Nearby structures were initially thought to be in danger, but officials say for now they are okay. No injuries have been reported. The road is blocked and Aiken County Sheriff's deputies are directing traffic. This morning, a missionary spoke at Stevens Creek Church about his work with orphanages around the world. Coleman Bailey has worked with orphans all over the world, including Africa and Ukraine. He was in Africa helping to build a new orphanage when the war in Ukraine started. He flew out immediately and helped relocate nine orphanages and nearly 30, 350 orphans to other parts of Europe. He says the kids he works with humbles him. One of the kids were they, they, they asked me if they could pray, and uh, I, said, I said, yeah, um, his name was Daniel, and, uh, and Daniel's prayer was, God, thank you so much I never have to sleep in a bomb shelter again. Uh, thank you so much I never have to hear an air raid siren again. Bailey adds the people of Ukraine know that many Americans are doing what they can to aid in the war effort, and they are grateful. Now to Ukraine as intense street fighting rages in the Donbas region. Ukrainian forces desperate to hold off the Russian advance. Britt Klinet is in Kyiv with the latest. An urgent call for support as heavy Russian artillery makes headway in capturing eastern Ukraine. This Ukrainian military video showing an attack on Russian forces in Kharkiv. And a sudden blast quickly filling the air in this undated Ukrainian military video, claiming to show another strike on a Russian vehicle in the Donetsk region. Casualties on both sides in the city of Severodonetsk, the epicenter of the battle where Russia is gaining control. British and Ukrainian officials say Russian bombers are using anti-ship missiles, and when used in ground attacks, they are highly inaccurate and can cause severe collateral damage and casualties. Ukraine's military now worried about running out of ammunition to fight back. Nice to meet you, Ursula. Pleasure to see you. You're welcome. How Good are you? The European Commission president meeting with President Zelensky in hopes to accelerate Ukraine's membership into the EU. Russia, meanwhile, saying it will neutralize potential threats in response to a buildup of NATO forces in Poland. <laughs> meanwhile, hundreds still fleeing the war-torn east. And in the darkest of days, a bittersweet moment. We now pronounce you husband and wife, says the celebrant. This soldier and his partner tying the knot in the devastated town of Borodyanka. Congratulations, guys. Just before he returns to the front line. This bridge was destroyed by Ukraine in an effort to stop Russian advances. This a reminder of just how close the Russians came to the capital and a reminder that this war grinds on. 
Britt Clenet, ABC News, Urban Kiev. Coming up next, Ryan Gold has this week's full forecast. Stay with us.